All right, they're both right at the belt line, so I'm going to let them work in here. These are going to slide up. Now, please. Now, please. Now, Anthony. It's in there? Okay. I give you both instructions. I just want to remind you to listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard and fight clean. Good luck. Antonio Tarver says he hasn't lost his power, hasn't lost his speed. Age is just a number, but what do you expect him to say? He's 46 years old and has a mission to become the oldest heavyweight champion of the world. Let me just correct something on that last graphic you saw. We got a little confused somehow, but Tarver's the man who's going to go to the body in the uppercut when in close, and Banks, not Tarver, the man, for me at least, who's going to use the jab in the right hand on the outside. Glad we got that fixed. Teddy Tarver is roughly 46 pounds heavier than he was in his heyday when he was knocking out the likes of Roy Jones Jr. Can he be a viable, credible heavyweight at the age of 46? I don't think so. I think it's more a statement that we're even asking the question because of how terrible the landscape of the heavyweights are especially in this country. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't even be asking that question. Really, to be honest with you. I mean, if the heavyweight division wasn't such a, a mess and so dominated by the Eastern European fighters, in particular the Klitschko's, who are very boring to watch, but very effective with their height and their size. But in the U.S., you just haven't had anybody who's put their hand up and said, I'm going to be the head of the class, so that's why Tarver is here. That's why he thinks, even if it's bad thinking, that's why he thinks that he can do something. Vladimir Klitschko, to his credit, may have looked better than ever in his last win over Pulev. And uh, Vladimir had some advice for Banks tonight. said, listen, you have what it takes. Go out there and make it happen. Come back with the win. Yeah, but for me, it's kind of hard to believe that Really fighting for Banks at this point in his career is a priority when you consider he's training as you said the heavyweight champ of the world And he's getting paid a lot more to do that than to oh, do that. right hand or left hand rather from Antonio Tarver Sorry, Teddy, but he really clipped Banks well and Banks shook it off And again, that's why I'm saying I don't think that the, even though he's a lot younger I just don't see the priority of boxing being there for Banks who's got a much better job, a much better gig going on, training the heavyweight champ of the world. For me, you know where the danger is in this fight? For, it's going to be a different take than anyone else has. But for me, what's really on the line for Banks, I'd be concerned that I blow the better gig. That if he gets embarrassed, Banks, that is, you know, blown out in a fight against a 46-year-old, does Clinch go lose respect for him? And does he no longer want him to train him. For me, that's a fair question. For me, that, really, for me, that's more on the line for Banks than anything else, because I don't think Banks is going to be heavyweight champ of the world. I think that he's risking more than he can gain by being in here right now, risking a gig that's a really good gig. Training the heavyweight champ of the world, making a lot of money. Well, Tarver landed the best punch in round one, that's for sure. We're headed to round two. I want Unlimited data, Canada and U.S. talk. All right, here's the punch you're talking about. The top of land, the big left hand counter punch. His bank's reaching just a little bit. Topper, with all that experience, counters with the left hand. But watch, Banks got shaken a little bit. But why wasn't it worse? Well, Banks rode with it. His head moved as he saw it at the last second. He turned with the punch, took a little off it. That's why he was able to absorb it as well as he did. Didn't get caught as clean as you might have thought when it first landed. What a career Antonio Tarver has, has had. Bronze medals at the 2006 Atlanta Games. Knocked out Roy Jones Jr. In fact, beat him twice. Won the light heavyweight championship of the world. Also some controversy was suspended for a year for failing a drug test. Said it cost him his broadcasting career. He was supposed to be with NBC at the Olympics. They fired him. Showtime let him go. As you imagine, like most people get caught, he said he didn't knowingly take any drugs. Felt the punishment was too harsh on him, and now he's trying to pick up the pieces and make one last run at a time. So he has no choice. 
That's why he's fighting. He just told you right there. That's why he's fighting. He doesn't have another career. Banks has another career. And the same way as you just said it, Tarver Blue, his other career as a broadcaster, for me, what's on the line, I say it again. Banks could blow his career as a trainer if he doesn't look decent in the fight. Emmanuel Stewart was the trainer for Vladimir Klitschko for so many years. And Banks was his hand-picked successor. He's been with Klitschko since 2004, been there a decade. Klitschko's never lost when Banks has been in his training camp. Even though Banks is in with a 46-year-old guy, he's not doing anything. And he's losing early on, or at least not winning early on. Maybe part of the reason is that he's been off a year and a half. It's going to take a while to get rid of some of that rust. A while where Tarver maybe could win some of these early rounds because of that inactivity of Banks and Tarver. Oh, of course, plenty of inactivity there, too. One year and one month since his last fight, a little less than Banks, but... My goodness, Tom has been at 46. He's been so inactive, you'd think he was retired. I mean, the past five years, it looks like he actually was semi-retired. Over one year since his last fight, as I said. And another shot catches Banks, who goes tumbling into the ropes. Tarver's not throwing much, Teddy, but when he does, he's landing. And it's with his left hand, his power hand. And again, a lot of gaps of inactivity from Carver. Two, year and a half, year and a half. Well, Banks looks the part. Fantastic physical condition. Tarver, he's 46. How's he going to look? But as far as timing and accuracy, Tarver seems to still have it. Stop. My break. Step away from each other. Don't hit him in the back standing up like that. Box. Tarver's good Stop for one ball. big punch around, Teddy. With this kind of pace, that's all you need. Time. Sweet is overrated. Have an irritating... Nothing fancy here, jab in the left hand. Jab sets it up, sets the table, and then the left hand is what you eat with. And there, look at, the only difference is, look at Banks trying to counter with the left hook. He was trying to counter with the left hook. He was a little late with that counter left hook. And what did it do? It left him a little exposed, a little out in space. And Tarver, with all his experience, landed the left hand. Two left hands landed by Tarver, two rounds in the bank. You, when, you know, riddle me this, Batman. When can you win a round with one punch? When the other guy doesn't hit you with one. When the other guy throws no punches. That was close. Same thing. Yes, sir. I, I don't want your head to get swollen. <laughs> you know, I don't want my partner with too big a head, so I make it a little difficult, but yes. You did have it right, Grasshopper. Yes, thank you. You can leave now. You're prepared. You're ready for the world. This fight was originally scheduled for September 29th, but Antonio Tarver fractured his thumb, so it was postponed until tonight. And if you're thinking, you know what, hey, if Banks hangs around, he's going to win the later rounds because Tarver's going to get tired. Maybe not so much in Tarver's last fight against Latif Coyote. He won the last six rounds of that fight, got a draw, which was changed over to a no decision after the failed drug test. But Tarver closed very strong in that battle. Look, Banks is 14 years younger, so a lot of people probably would have picked him. And he still can come back and win this fight. But here's an important point for me. You know, a lot of things sometimes are smoke and mirrors, but I like to get down right to the crux, to the merit of things. And in the ring, you get down to the truth. And for me, Banks, he really has only stepped up to an A-level once in his career. And he was knocked out for the IBF Cruiserweight title versus Tomas Adamak. He has never been able to win at the level Tarver has been able to win at. The question is, what level is Tarver at? Obviously at 46. But again, the bottom line for me, Tarver has won at a higher level of competition his whole career than Banks ever has. Coming up on Saturday night, the Heisman Trophy presentation, 8 o'clock on ESPN. Will it be Amari Cooper from Alabama, Melvin Gordon from Wisconsin, or Marcus Mariota from Oregon? Teddy, who's your pick? I think it's going to be the quarterback from Oregon. You know, I think he's captured everybody's eye, you know, with that team being the number two team in the country right now and 
obviously vying for the national title. I mean, he makes it happen. He does it with his legs and with his arm. His stats are just unarguable as far as being tremendous. I think he's going to wind up getting it, and I think a lot of NFL teams are going to be positioning themselves to get him as their quarterback. Another relatively inactive round here from Pachanga. Separate from each other. Time. On TSN. Let's take a look at tonight's foolproof punch of the night brought to you by Just for Men. And it was that good, and the fight was stopped. Gushe. Hey. That was your foolproof punch of the night. A knockout victory for Gushe earlier tonight here on this ESPN. Boxing special. Is that the punch of the night or the punches? Looks like the punches of the night for me. Getting it done with a combination was the Olympian. You know, I mentioned earlier, last round, Banks 14 years younger. You know, having said that, you'd expect, you know, at first you'd say, you hear that he's fighting someone, he's 14 years younger. You'd think he was in his 20s, not 32 years old. But when your opponent's 46, yeah, 32 is pretty young. Although the older guy, for me, has the lead in this fight so far. Nothing scintillating, I don't have to tell you that at all, but just the experience and the space, controlling space by Tarver. He stays a little out of range, and then every once in a while he steps into range with his power punch to Southpaw, left hand. The punch that he can turn his foot into, his back into, and get some power. Antonio Tarver was Mason Dixon in the Rocky film, Rocky Six. And he threw more punches in that film or in that fight. <laughs> well, he said that's what gave him the confidence to, to be a heavyweight. He said he was 235 pounds as Mason Dixon. Said he felt great, felt strong. He said, hey, maybe one day I'll be a heavyweight instead of a light heavyweight. And that day came when he was 45, 46 years old. But he's 2-0 oh in the division. And told us he, he's not really even worried about Banks. He thinks he's going to get a shot at Klitschko. We'll see if that ever happens. I asked Banks if he'd ever fight Klitschko right, we'll and said that him and Vladimir actually had that discussion once. And Klitschko said he didn't know if he wanted to fight Banks because Banks knows every single thing about Vladimir's tendencies. Well, again, I think that the reason Tom is around, one is you said it, he, he lost his broadcasting job, doesn't have a lot of choices, but... The other reason is I think he looks at the boxing landscape outside of the Klitschko's and he sees a lot of Rocky Balboa's. You know, he sees a weak division. If you can fight and you can win, why not fight and win? I mean, here's a guy who fought as tall as that is his entire career at 175 pounds and now he's fighting in his 220s at 46 years of age. I mean, again, if the boxing landscape at heavyweight is that bad, well, why not? That's what he thinks anyway. Banks lost his last fight to Seth Mitchell. He was very inactive in that fight. Said the boos from the fans hurt him. Said he never wants to hear him again. Well, he's hearing him again tonight, Ted. Yes, he is. Young Tom Sims. At least throw the damn shots. You ain't got no chance if you ain't throwing no punches. That was Javon Sugar Hill in the corner of Jonathan Banks, who's pleading with his fighter to do something, Teddy. Be active. Stay on him. Push the pace. You know, you got to find incentive somewhere. But again, I said it at the very top that I just don't think that boxing is the priority. Look, he's not fighting like a guy with urgency, is he? No. Okay. So, to my point, that Banks' priority for Banks is not boxing right now. You think in the back of his head he's thinking, I, I, I'm okay. It's not his priority. You know, it, it's, put it this way, I don't know if he's thinking that, but he's not thinking, I have to win this fight for my career to get somewhere. He's got a career somewhere else. Let's now listen into the corner. Here's Javon Sugar Hill. It's still only one punch. Right back, right back jabbing. Lee Lee, Lee Lee, Lee Lee. Lee Lee, right back to him. Don't let him reset.
set. Where your legs when you slip it. Where your legs when you slip it, man. Right back to him. Mouth. That was Emmanuel Stewart's nephew trying to re revive the Kronk gym in Detroit. That's where Banks is from. You know, it's real simple. I mean, you can stand here and talk all different things all night. Not a lot of going on there. Tarver, what he's doing is right there, he just grabs a little bit because he wants space. And Tarver's controlling space. Watch him. Slides out of range, and then he looks for a spot to slide in. And when he slides in, it's with that left hand. He's a little out of range now, and he's looking to do that. Slide into range with his left hand. That's it for Tarver. And that's with the corner. It really Banks himself need to figure out. Do you think that power shot in the first round really laid the foundation for this where Banks is just a little too tentative now, worried about the counter shot? I think that combined with Banks, you know, not having the temperament, I talk about it all the time, he's not a man on fire. He's not that kind of guy. He's not a house on fire when he gets in that ring. I think when you put that together with a year and a half of inactivity, as Banks is dealing with, yeah, I think that will make you a little more tentative. Another nice one-two moments ago from Tarver. His timing really is perfect tonight. Another shot, jab, sticks in there on Banks' jaw. You know, Mariano Rivera, the great, and I don't want to compare these guys to Mariano Rivera, believe me, but the great reliever, the Hall of Fame reliever from the New York Yankees. Sandman. The Sandman, you know, he put people to sleep. He got it done with, really, with one pitch. He had cut fastball his whole career. Tarver's trying to get it done with one punch. Just that left hand, Stop. in and out with that left hand. Step away from each other. When designing the Infinity... Earlier tonight, Teddy, a fighter out of your gym, Theodore A. Atlas gym, looking very good, Marcus Brown. He boxes out of the Dr. Atlas Cops and Kids gyms, and he's 13-0 now, light heavyweight. Former Olympian, 2012 team in London. Terrific kid, terrific talent. And I hope he goes all the way. I think he has the ability to be a future world champion. To me, you gotta have three things. You gotta have intelligence, got it. Talent, got it. Character, you're never gonna meet a better, more decent, and moral person in this business. But now he needs one other thing, experience. And he's starting to get it. A very easy win for him tonight. To be fair, his opponent had to withdraw, so it was a last-minute replacement. But it's another notch in the win column. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it, Todd. I'm glad you said that. No doubt about it. He, he wasn't in there exactly with a uh, top, top-level guy, but he's got the talent to deal with the top-level guys. He just had to get more and more experience, mature with that experience. And then when he steps up, I believe he's going to be able to make a statement. Jonathan Banks needs to make a statement of, of some sort. If he wants to realize his dream of maybe getting a shot at a heavyweight title, he's not going to get it with a performance like this or like the performance in his last fight when he lost a decision to Seth Mitchell. Banks grew up in Detroit, won the Golden Gloves there, met Emmanuel Stewart at the age of 15. Trained with Stewart all those years. Said the best advice he ever got from Emmanuel Stewart was never stop working, work hard, work smart. It's hard to argue with that advice. Yes, it is. By the way, you might have guessed this already, but Tarver is at the heaviest weight of his career. I did guess that. Yeah, I, well, again, that doesn't make you... Uh, the Mason Kreskin, but good job there by you and uh, Banks. The heaviest weight in over three years, and he's fighting like it. Five rounds to none, according to everybody. Not me. You gave him one? Yeah, I gave him one. The fifth round I gave to Banks. Hopefully that's been calculated. But I gave the first four rounds to Tarver, and then the last round to Banks. Well, Banks' last fight against Seth Mitchell, I told you the crowd was booing. He said it sucks. It was the worst thing ever. 
He said he absolutely has a dying need to come out aggressive tonight. Well, he's dying from not being aggressive tonight. Again, you you know, people born round, they don't die square. And if you it's not in your heart, your soul, and your bones to be aggressive, you know, if that's not your makeup, you're not gonna be aggressive. And that's not his makeup. Hook up with Virgin Mobile. Back here, you're watching our heavyweight contest, round seven of a scheduled ten between Jonathan Banks in the gold trunks and Antonio, the magic man Tarver, who at 46 years old is trying to continue his quest to become the oldest heavyweight champion ever. He's got a new trainer in Orlando Cuellar, and his claim to fame, Teddy, is that he tries to get the last drop of juice out of the lemon from some older boxer. He did it with Juan Carlos Gomez, Aaron Davis, Glenn Johnson, and now with Tarver. Can you call him Tarver a lemon? Well, he's making lemonade tonight, if he is. That's the way to get out of it. That's the way to get off those ropes. That's my boy. That's my boy. Very good. Very good. But it, it has been a limit of a fight so far. A dud for the most part. Tarver has landed the bigger power punches. But between rounds, Tarver said, am I winning? His trainer said, yes, you are, even though you're not doing much, because Banks is doing even less. I guess no, how, you know, I guess no matter how old you are, and both these guys are older, especially Tarver. You know, Tarver, as I said, 14 years old or 46 years old, and way, 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 way past his prime, but class still rises to the top, you know, and he's still the class in there. I mean, in a boring fight, a non-eventful fight, but I said it earlier, Tarver has one of the le levels throughout his career, an A-level, that Banks has really never won at, never. And um, it's shown again here, believe it or not, even at this age, that the class is still Tarver and the left hand is still Tarver. This is the most active we've seen Tarver, and it comes in round seven. He's beaten up a guy 14 years his junior. He's making it look easy. Another one, two staggers Banks. And you know, don't forget it. And again, he's oh, really. Oh, yeah, he's Banks, he's baby, he's got out. He goes down. The count begins. Banks is in real trouble here. Six, seven, eight. Can you continue? I wonder what Klitschko is thinking about right now that this is the man who trains him. I'm just wondering. He's thinking, I'm going to get Banks as a full time trainer now, not part time. Tarver, left, right. They may stop it here. He's taking some big shots, and it's all over. The dream continues for the 46 year old. How do you like him now? This is sucks. Yeah, now, yeah, now, yeah. He told us, Teddy. He still has his speed. He still has his power. And he still got his mouth. And does Tarver or well, does Banks still have his job as the trainer of the heavyweight champ? I wonder. But I said it from the beginning. Banks' priority is not fighting. And even at 46, Tarver has a big edge in that department because his priority is fighting. He has no other option. And that showed, his class showed, and the urgency that Tarver has showed over the lack of urgency that Banks did not have. And you know, let's not forget, I talked about it all night. Tarver's won at a level that Banks has never won at in the pros. Tarver also was a 1996 Olympic representative for the U.S. Tava was one of the great amateur fighters in U.S. history. And some of that gave him an edge also over Banks. Here's Even the, at 46. Here's the first knockdown. Sorry, Teddy. And it was the first round that Tarver really tried to go for a knockdown. Yeah, it was there for the last few rounds. This time he stepped in. Downstairs, then upstairs with the left hand, and then right in with the left hand. Again, we talked about Mariano Rivera winning all those games as a relief pitcher with one pitch. Oh. Well, there's one punch. The left hand that Tarver used all night long to win this fight 
and to finish this fight. Again, he reaches in a little bit, goes to the body, then upstairs with the left hand. The power punch for Southpaw, you can turn into it, and in this case, you can turn 225 and a half pounds into it, and he turns into it again as Banks goes straight back, laying there on the ropes, and gets caught. And here's the way it finished. Banks, to his credit, got up, continued, but for just a few seconds more, Jack Reese says that will do it. And Tarver gets his 22nd knockout and his 31st professional win. Yeah, Banks had enough, and Reese knew he had enough. All right, let's send it up now to Ray Flores for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 25 seconds of the seventh round. Referee in charge, Jack Reese, waves off the bot for your winner by knockout, Antonio Magic Man Teddy, does Tarver now fit in in the heavyweight division? You mentioned it's pretty weak. He's got to have a spot somewhere, right? I got something very interesting out there for everybody. And you know what? This would be interesting. I think he fits in with the leading contender, undefeated fighter in the U.S. People say maybe has a shot to win a heavyweight title. Who knows? But I'd like to see Tarver fit right in there with Deontay Wilder. Wilder's undefeated, all knockouts. The bronze bomber. Former Olympian, he won the bronze medal. And he's got one thing, he can bang like hell with the right hand, but I don't believe in him in other ways yet. He fought nobody, and I mean nobody. And even a 46-year-old Tarver would be a step up for him. I find that interesting. I'd like to see Tarver with Deontay Wilder. Wilder what's, remains to burn first in the heavyweight title. We'll hear from the 46-year-old knockout winner, the Magic Man, Antonio Tarver, when we return.